What's up YouTube? I hope each and every one of you guys are healthy and enjoying life today. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the 2024 Mazda CX-5 Premium Plus. Huge thank you to John Gutierrez over at Safford Brown Mazda of Chantilly, Virginia for allowing me to do this video for you guys today. If you are interested in this particular CX-5 or any Mazda product, then I'll be sure to have John's information on screen as well as in the description box down below. But with that said, let's get into the video. It is a beautiful yet hot and windy day outside here today, so I apologize in advance if there is any wind noise in today's video. But just like usual, first I'm gonna talk about the exterior and the performance. So like I said, this is a 2024 Mazda CX-5 Premium Plus, and this particular one's been painted in the $595 Soul Red. I wanted to preface this video by saying there have been no changes made to the Premium Plus for the 2024 model year. So with that in mind, as standard with the Premium Plus, you get adaptive LED headlights with high beam control, as well as LED daytime running lights and standard turn signals. Now I'm gonna take a step to the left and give you a front on shot of the Premium Plus. So with this trim level, you get the gloss black mesh style grille with the Mazda logo located at the center. Just beneath your grille, you will find your chrome signature wing and then zoom in out coming towards the bottom of your front end. You get the satin black lower grille. You also get the body color lower fascia, which is what this piece is right here. And then you can see you get the satin black front chin at the center of that lower fascia. And then last but not least, with the Premium Plus, you get seven 7.9 inches of ground clearance. Now, one thing I personally really like about this trim level is that it gives you the body color accenting here on the exterior. So on some of the lower trim levels of the CX-5, the lower fascia would be satin black, looks a little bit cheaper. So like I said, you get that body color lower fascia, that body color lower fascia leads into your body color wheel arch moldings. And with the Premium Plus, you get the 19 inch gray metallic finished wheels and the wheels are wrapped in 225 Toyo A36 all season tires. I'm gonna give you a view of the tread pattern on these tires here real quick. There you go. And then I'm also going to take a step back and give you a front three quarter shot of this thing. With the Premium Plus, you get the windshield wiper de-icer. You also get rain sensing wipers, which is definitely very nice. And just to give you a little explanation of what the windshield wiper de-icer does is that basically it has a little heating element right here where the wipers park. So you're not going to get that ice buildup if you live in a colder climate. Definitely a very nice feature for those who live in a northern climate or a cold climate where you get some snow and stuff like that. Now coming on down the side, you get the body color mirror caps with integrated turn signals. And as standard, these side view mirrors are heated, power folding, and you will find your blind spot monitoring on the upper left hand side of your driver side mirror and on the upper right hand side of your passenger side mirror. Now I'm gonna take a step back and give you a side profile shot of this thing. Now. The Premium Plus does not come standard with roof rails, but this particular one's been optioned with the $750 roof rail and cross rail package. So you get the satin chrome roof rails. These are the roof rails. Those right there are the cross rails. And you can see if you get that package, again, the roof rails are going to accent your window trim. So speaking of the window trim, you get a mix of satin black window trim, which can be found on the top of the windows. Then you get the satin chrome window trim on the bottom of the windows. You also get body color door handles with keyless access. Just keep in mind, however, the keyless access function is only on your front two door handles. The rear two door handles do not get the keyless access function. And then following the front with the lower fascia and the wheel arch moldings, you also get the body color door cladding. So again, on some of the lower trim levels, all of these pieces here would be satin black. Again, I think the body color pieces really just spruce up the exterior to make it just look that much nicer. Again, that's why they call it the Premium Plus. It just has that Premium Plus touch. But coming here towards the rear, you have your fuel door. In, in order to open up your fuel door, you do have to access it through the driver door. So you come over to here, you pull up on that, and that is how you have access here to your fuel door. Now, one thing I wanted to mention, you do not get a capitalist filler neck. However, 87 octane will do you just fine with this thing. Closing that back up, coming up to here, you get the body color shark fin antenna. You also get the body color roof spoiler with your integrated third brake light and some satin black accenting. I'm gonna take a step back, give you a rear three quarter shot of this thing. And I'm also gonna let you know that as standard with this, you get the LED combination taillights. 
And I'm gonna take a step to the right, give you a little booty shot of this thing. And you can see you get the chrome badging back here. You get your backup camera back here, which is kind of offset to the left if you follow that center line. And then one thing with the Premium Plus is that you get the height adjustable power lift gate. And if you wanted to open up the power lift gate, the vehicle has to be unlocked or you can have your key fob in your pocket, follow the Mazda logo down and you'll feel a little pad. Press on that pad and the lift gate will open up. Now, this being, you know, the CX-5, it doesn't have that much trunk space. You can fit what you need to back here. Um, however, I have seen some SUVs with more trunk space. However, you know, this thing has enough trunk space if you don't just fill your trunk all the time with suitcases or just stuff. Um, so you can make do with it. So if you have four kids or two kids that ride with you all the time and they both got to go to baseball practice or something, yeah, it might be a little bit tight back here, but you can make it work. So I'm going to put the pricing of all the accessories on screen right now, like the all weather mats, the cargo tray, the cargo net, etc. You can see all the pricing of that stuff on screen right now. But anyways, with the all weather mats, you get the CX-5 badging on them. I don't want to mess with that but you can see cx5 badging you get the same badge here on your cargo tray and you may notice the door handle looking things on the outside of the trunk this is how you drop your second row seat so if you pull on that the second row seats will drop and they'll give you about an additional three and a half feet of storage space with those seats down now from the trunk opening to the second row seat i would say you probably get about three three and a half feet of storage space um, and then with those second row seats down you might get about five and a half maybe six foot uh, of storage space again with the second row seats down also you get these little storage cubbies that kind of go in i'm not sure if this is going to pick up all that well on camera but they kind of go in here this is like the trunk line where it's opening and they go in like that you get the same thing on the passenger side however on the passenger side you can see you also get a 12 volt power outlet and underneath all of this stuff you pull up on this thing right here and that will reveal your spare tire so definitely nice to see a spare tire on this thing and other than that, that's kind of about it for what we got going on here in the trunk area. Now on the trunk itself, you also get a halogen light. And then if you press that button right there, that is going to close the trunk. You get a little auditory beep before the trunk begins to close. Now, finishing things off here at the rear end, you can see you get the body color rear bumper, but you get the satin black valence right here with your dual exhaust system. Now let's say you have a jet ski, maybe you got a you know, small little John boat, something like that. Well. The Premium Plus gets a max tow capacity of 2,000 pounds. So you can pull a jet ski. I'm not sure if you can pull two jet skis with this, but I know you can at least pull one jet ski. As long as the jet ski, the four wheeler or something like you're that like that you that you are pulling is less than 2,000 pounds, you're going to be totally fine here uh, with the CX-5. I believe even the turbo models also have the 2,000 pound max tow capacity. So. If you're looking for an SUV that can haul around your family and tow, I don't know, you might want to look elsewhere, but if what you're going to be towing is a utility trailer for the brush in your yard to haul to the dump, you'll be totally fine here with this thing. But anyways, with that stuff out of the way, let's move into performance. Pop and open that hood reveals the two and a half liter naturally aspirated four cylinder that produces 187 horsepower and 186 pound feet of torque. It's made it to a six speed automatic transmission for a zero to 60 time in 8.7 seconds. And if you are wondering about fuel economy, you can achieve 23 miles per gallon in the city, 29 miles per gallon on the highway for 25 miles per gallon combined with standard all wheel drive. One thing I really like about Mazda is that they give you options. So if you don't really care that much about power you're looking more for fuel economy well you can get the na engine but if you like this interior but you want a little bit more power you can take a look at the turbo premium it's going to give you quite a bit more horsepower yes it might cost a little bit more but you at least have the option but if you're enjoying the video so far today please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up please hit that subscribe button. I'm on my journey to 100,000 subscribers and I cannot reach my goal without your support. So if you're enjoying the video, if you learned anything thus far, please take a second to like, comment, and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. But with that stuff out of the way, let's move into the interior. Moving on into the interior, as before mentioned, you get keyless access as standard. So all you have to do is have your key fob in your pocket, walk up to the vehicle, put your hand behind the door handle and it will unlock. You can also lock it if you press that black button right there. However, the key fob battery is low. So the keyless access function is not working at the current moment. However, this is what the key fob looks like. It's satin black with some chrome accenting and going over the functions on it, starting from the top, you have your lock function, your unlock function, your power lift gate function, and your panic function all the way down at the bottom. 
But now let's see what the interior of this particular Premium Plus has to offer. So this one's been specced with the black leather upholstery. If you're not a fan of the black leather, you can also spec it with the parchment. We'll get more into that here in a second. I do want to start on our driver door panel. So at the top of the door panel, you get some faux leather with some stainless steel looking trim. Then you have your power side view mirror controls here. And if you wanted to power fold in the side view mirrors, you twist this all the way to the right. And that is how you power fold the mirrors in. That button is going to restrict your passenger window privileges. You have your unlock and your lock functions, automatic up and down windows at all four corners. You also get a nicely padded armrest, some accent colored stitching, a little bit of storage space, a spot you could set a water bottle, and the Premium Plus comes standard with a 10 speaker Bose sound system. Also as standard, you get an eight way power driver seat with two way power lumbar and two memory seat adjustment settings. You also get a six way power front passenger seat and as standard, these front seats are heated and ventilated. Now let's step into the interior of this thing. Take a listen to what it sounds like when you close the door. Now let's fire this thing up. And that is what it sounds like when you fire this thing up from the driver's perspective. Now what I'm gonna do is I wanna walk you throughout the entire interior, starting up top here. So you can see you get a defroster for your front driver window as well as for the front passenger window. You also get a tweeter up top there as well. And if you come down just a little bit, you get an HVAC vent. Pressing and holding on that button right there is going to power fold, or excuse me, it is going to open and or close your power lift gate. That is going to turn your lane keeping assist system on or off. And then coming to the bottom down here, pulling on that is going to open your fuel door and pulling on that is going to pop open your hood. Now coming to the bottom of the steering column, if you flip that down, that gives you access into your manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel. So you can push the steering wheel away from you. You can bring it towards you and it also moves down and up. And once you find your comfortable position, all you gotta do is lock it right back into place. Now, let's take a listen to the turn signal. Not only is that your turn signal control stock, it is also your headlight control stock. So all the way up, that is headlights off. That is headlights in the automatic position. That is parking lights on. And all the way up is headlights in the always on position. Personally for me, I like to leave it in the automatic position. Now zooming back out, you get a leather wrapped steering wheel with steering wheel mounted paddle shifters. The Premium Plus also gives you the heated steering wheel that you can turn on right there. And just like any other vehicle, you have your horn at the center. So let's take a listen to it. That is what the horn sounds like here on the CX-5. Now going throughout the controls here on the steering wheel, you have your volume controls right here. If you wanted to mute the audio system, you just push like that and that is how you mute it. Now if you come over to here, that is to go forwards on a track, that is to go backwards on a track, and if you click that button at the center, that is your info button. It's going to adjust what you see here on your seven inch LCD meter display, which I will get into here in a bit. Then down here, that is how you speak to the vehicle. You can tell the vehicle to turn the AC system to 62 degrees or whatever degrees you wanna do. And then that is also to pick up on a phone call. That right there is to hang up on a phone call. And coming to the right-hand side of the steering wheel, as standard, you get Mazda's radar cruise control. Basically, that's fancy terms for adaptive cruise control with stop and go. So here are your cruise control settings. You can have the uh, cruise control on right there and you can adjust the mode if you want standard cruise control or you want the adaptive cruise mode um and then yeah you get your upshift paddle there downshift paddle there and then you also have your windshield wiper control stock as mentioned earlier you get rain sensing wipers as standard so all the way up is off you come down one that is your automatic position now this one being the premium plus basically when you step up to this trim level it adds the head-up display system uh, mazda does not call it the head-up display system they call it what do they call it here they call it the active driving display. It's the head-up display. And it's basically up top here. So right now it is displaying the digital speedometer readout. Now coming over to here as standard with this thing, you get the 10.25 inch infotainment system with navigation and wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android auto connectivity. Um, one thing that is interesting about this screen is that it is not touchscreen in the Mazda screen. However, it is touchscreen in the Apple CarPlay screen. So it's like, well, if it's touchscreen in the Apple CarPlay screen, why not just make it always touchscreen? But I'm not uh, the one who designs this, so I can just be the one to ask the question of why. Uh, but anyways, it's a very easy, Easy to use system so if it's not touchscreen basically what you have to do 
is down here you have this scroll knob and you also have these shortcut buttons so that's going to shortcut you into your nav stuff your home screen your audio stuff then you got your back button then you can go throughout the screen here so i'm twisting to the right it's going down twisting to the left it's going up and let's say i wanted to go into my info screen all i got to do is push down on that and it's going to bring me into my information screen and let's say i wanted to go back into the home screen i can click that back button right there it's going to bring me back into the home screen so very easy to use uh system here you can go in between your different uh, things like entertainment you got your communication you also have your different settings which is the only screen I really wanted to show you so you can go into your in vehicle displays so you can go into your active driving display aka head up display you can adjust the head uh, the height of it so you can adjust it down or up you can have it be auto brightness or you can adjust the brightness yourself you can also adjust the tilt of it not quite sure why you would adjust the tilt of it but anyways uh, you can also adjust the um, basically what you see on the driving display as well so pretty cool, uh, very easy to use screen as mentioned before. And then you have the shortcut buttons. And if you wanted to go into the Apple CarPlay screen, if your phone is connected, all you gotta do is push down like that and boom, it is going to pop open your Apple CarPlay screen. So you do get full screen Apple CarPlay. And when in the Apple CarPlay screen, it is touch screen. So it's interesting. It's not touch screen when you're not in the Apple CarPlay screen, but it is touch screen when you're in the Apple CarPlay screen. So it's like, why not always make it touch screen? Anyways, very easy to use screen. Now below that, you get your two HVAC vents. You get your hazard button located in between the two HVAC vents. You also have your push button, start button, and beneath your HVAC vents, this is to turn the heated steering wheel on or off. Right here, it's gonna let you know who is buckled and who is not buckled. That is letting you know if the passenger airbag is on or off. And as standard with this thing, you get the dual zone climate control system. That is what the climate control system looks like. Temperature controls there, it's all physical. And then also with the Premium Plus, you get the heated and the ventilated front seats, both with three levels of adjustability. Definitely very nice to see that. Also with the Premium Plus, you get a wireless charging pad. This is an iPhone 14 Pro Max, one of the bigger phones on the market, and it does fit down there in the wireless charging pad. One thing about the uh, wireless charging pad is let's see if it works because it was working okay it is working so my phone iphone 14 pro max does work in the wireless charging pad sometimes you get in a vehicle and it only works with certain phones iphone 14 pro max it does work with and then also down in there you can see you get a 12 volt power outlet now zooming back out let's say you wanted to control the transmission with the paddle shifters right well first things first you got to go into drive and then you flip this over to the left and now you can control the transmission with the steering wheel mounted paddle shifters you also get a few different drive modes so pushing up you have your sport mode then you get your normal mode and all the way down is your off-road mode so you get three different drive modes uh, and then again i already went over these controls here however this is like your favorites button this is showing or telling you how to set up your favorites button. Uh, and then again, all of these controls are for your infotainment system. Then you have your volume control knob here. You can volume up, volume down, push on it to mute. Pull up to engage your parking brake. If you wanted to disengage the parking brake, you have to push your foot against the brake, push against that, and the parking brake will disengage. And then behind the parking brake, you have your auto hold function. So if you press the auto hold function and you activate it, basically, when that is activated, the vehicle will hold you in place by itself with its braking system. And if you wanted to go forward again, all you gotta do is hit the accelerator. Very nice function in traffic. And then you get two cup holders, a nicely padded armrest with some stitching. And opening up the armrest, you get a divider in here you can take out. Down here, you also get a 12 volt power outlet, two USB-C ports. And if you open this thing up, I believe this is where you would put um, the SD card for the navigation system. Also, you get a little bit of storage space. I'd say it's about six inches deep, followed by probably three and a half inches this way. So not all that much storage space down in the center console, but you can fit what you need to. Uh, and then coming over to the passenger side, you do not get a lockable lower glove box. You can see your owner's manual and all that kind of stuff is in there. It is a smaller glove box, but you can still fit your napkins and stuff in the glove box. And then this is what the passenger side looks like. Up top here, you get an auto dimming rear view mirror and you also get the home link. Home link is your universal garage door opener. You can open up three different garage bays. And then you get a spot you could set your sunglasses. Both of your reading lights are halogen. Uh, and then beneath that, 
you have this thing. So when this is flush, when you open up the doors, the interior lights will turn on. When it is clicked to the left, the interior lights are not gonna turn on when you open up the doors. And if you click it all the way to the right, that is your instant dome light on button. It's gonna turn on all the interior dome lights. Now, this thing also comes standard with a power sunroof. It does slide and it also does tilt as well. So that is the slide function. Um, let's see, does it go any further back? Nope. And if you wanted to tilt the sunroof up, all you have to do is push up right here. You push up and boom, the sunroof is gonna tilt open. So that is that, I'm gonna close it because it is sunny and it's hot. Vanity mirror, vanity light, and then the visor itself does not slide out, but you do get this slide out piece that does slide out for when the sun is in those awkward positions. And then the driver gets an Opu panel up top here, as does the front passenger. And really, that's kind of about it for what we got going on here in the front. So I gotta say, I think these seats are very, very comfortable for me. Um, I could do my do a long road trip in this thing, and I wouldn't have any problems with the comfortability of these front seats. Um, you know, I'm five foot nine, and I'm a smaller person, so they fit me very nicely. One thing that I did miss here on the dash is that you see this like knob here. So if you mess with the knob, that is how you brighten and or dim the gauge cluster. However, if you click on the knob, it's gonna switch you in between your kilometers per hour and your miles an hour. So that is that, just a little thing that I did miss. Now I'm gonna throw the entire window sticker on screen and you can take a look at the standard safety features. You can take a look at uh, everything that you get as standard, but take a look at the different options that this has. And then also I would say, take a look at where it says premium plus package. That is everything that you get when you step up to the premium plus trim level. Now I'm just gonna highlight the MSRP. So the MSRP of the way that this particular 2024 CX-5 Premium Plus is spec is $39,865. I think this is very nicely equipped for the money in my personal opinion. I just did a video yesterday with an Outback Touring XT, which is their top of the line trim level. Uh, it does have the turbo engine, so there's a little caveat there. Um, but interior wise, I'd say they're about right on par with each other. I kind of like this one better because it's got the physical climate control easier to control um, but you know that comes down to personal preference now I think this is a good deal I think prices are continuing to go up but at the current price point I think this is a good deal if it were me I'd probably have to get a turbo model the turbo models are just they add that you know element of fun driving to this but you know honestly if you don't really care about power you're gonna be totally fine here with the non turbo I'm telling you it's enough power from stoplight to stoplight but if you're like me you like power Take a look at the turbo models. I do want to show you though what we got going on in the rear seats before moving into the driving portion of the video. So this is what the door panel looks like back here. You get automatic up and down windows back here and the windows don't go all the way down. They stop about right there. You also get a nicely padded armrest, a little bit of storage base, a speaker, and then this is what these second row seats look like. So we'll step into the second row, close the door there. And up top here, Opu panel, a spot you can sit your dry cleaning. You get a seat back pocket behind both the driver and the front passenger seat. You also get two HVAC vents. You get the same stuff on that side. You also get two reading lights back here that are both halogen. And you know, I don't know if I mentioned this, but you also do get heated outboard second row seats. And you may be asking, well, where's the heated seat button? Well, you got to fold down your center fold down armrest and you get the two cup holders. And then you have these two buttons here for your heated outboard second row seats. And you get three levels of adjustability with those seats. And then if you open this thing up, you also get two USB-A ports down in there as well. So I will say, I think these seats are very, very comfortable here in the second row. And going over my knee and my leg room, uh, I am five foot nine adjusted behind myself. I've got quite a bit, a little bit of knee and leg room. Here's another view of that knee and leg room. And when it comes to headroom, I've got plenty of headroom as well. However, I think this seat is further back than it would be uh, normally. Okay, I guess, yeah, it's in, my, it's in my spot. But one thing I wanted to show you is that up top here, you see this? If you pull on this, right? I'm gonna do this and this at the same time. You can recline these seats. So now the seats are nice and reclined and I'm just that much more comfortable. And me being five foot nine, no issues with headroom. But you know, we talked about the exterior, we talked about the performance, and now we've talked about what's going on here in the interior of this thing. So I wanna see what this thing's like to drive as I'm assuming you guys do as well. So I'll see you guys in the driver's seat. All right, now onto the driving portion of the video. Take a listen. Handling test. 
handles very, very well. That is one thing I really like about Mazdas is that make their cars handle very, very well, but they're also very comfortable to drive and they don't go over bumps very firmly either. So it's nice. You kind of get the best of both worlds. You get good handling, but you also get a good ride as well. So that is something that I really like about Mazdas, the driving characteristic. And one thing I mentioned earlier in the video is that Mazda gives you the option, right? So they give you the option. Okay, you want the NA engine, you want better fuel economy, you have that right and it's going to cost you a little bit less money but if you want the extra power and you don't care quite as much about the fuel economy but you still want decent fuel economy well they also offer their turbo variants as well so you're going to get better fuel economy or you're going to get a little bit worse fuel economy but you're going to get much more power so they give you what you want and they kind of cater to you and what you want and you can kind of pick so right they're going to give you you know the premium plus right that's just the na four cylinder but then they also have the turbo premium which is pretty i think going to have everything that the premium plus has uh except it's going to have the turbo engine so they just give you options and i like options and also i wanted to say this thing is very very comfortable i think this is a great looking suv i love the soul red it gives it personality you know a lot of vehicles on the road nowadays seem to all have grays whites blacks and just boring colors whereas this kind of adds a little bit of color right so and it's also just a beautiful red in the direct sun it changes colors depending on the lighting it's just a very very nice color so if you like color take a look at soul red it is beautiful but they also have a couple other beautiful blues uh, a really nice white which i was just saying white's kind of boring but they have got some beautiful blues as well uh, and then also one thing i wanted to say is as mentioned with the soul red you have the option of the black leather and you also have the option of the parchment leather so if you get one of the blue colors i can't remember which one it is you can only spec with the black you can't get it with the parchment so the parchment is kind of spec dependent uh, on the exterior color so just keep that in mind when looking for uh, your perfect spec. So a couple other things I wanted to say is that the Bose sound system sounds great. You know, that's the standard sound system here with the Premium Plus, uh, and it sounds fantastic. The Bose sound system, I've never really been in a vehicle with the Bose sound system that I've found that it sounds bad, but here is a nice little acceleration. So this one being a non-turbo, it still has pretty decent getup, you know? Um, and as I was mentioning, you know, if you don't really care all that much about the power, you're gonna be totally fine with this. You know, it's gonna stoplight to stoplight, you're not gonna feel like it needs any bit more power. You know, once, you know, you start really getting up to 60, 70, 80 miles an hour, and that's when you're gonna notice, okay, well maybe I need a little bit more power, but you know, even for you, like if you don't drive super fast, you're gonna be totally fine at those speeds as well. It's just a personal preference. Now, handling, as mentioned, it handles great. We're gonna do a little handling test right here. Uh, go around these turns at a faster speed uh, than I would normally go around it, just to show you that they do handle very, very well. So this is what I call the handling test. So let's see. Very flat around that turn, no body roll. And that is one thing I really like about the CX-5, doing the body roll test, no body roll. Like, nearly no body roll. It's actually kind of crazy, because on certain SUVs, you get behind the wheel and you start doing the body roll test, and it's, you can really feel it. You know, obviously, once you get higher up in the RPMs, uh, there is a little bit more body roll, but it is very, very limited. And that, <laughs> that is something that's great about the Mazdas. You know what I mean? They've just got handling down. I'm gonna take a left turn here. Hopefully this guy doesn't turn. And I'm just gonna give you a normal acceleration. Nothing, nothing crazy, just normal. Here you go. Honestly, this thing's got great low end power. I mean, it really, I mean, unless you really, really need the turbo, like I would need the turbo. Uh, you don't need the turbo. I mean, you really don't. Those low accelerations from like 1,000 to 3,000 RPM, if it's just you in the car, you'd be like, this thing actually has got quite a bit of get up even in the lower RPM. So definitely got respectable power for it being an NA four cylinder. So a couple things to summarize it. It's got a comfortable ride. It's got more than adequate power. Um, it's got great fuel economy, 23 in the city. You know, that's pretty good for this. Um, 
and it also looks great. It drives great. The sound system is great. So I think this is one of the better values in the CX-5 lineup. Yeah, you're not going to get the faster engine, but it's going to give you you know, pretty much all the doohickeys and features that you want here on the interior. It's going to give you the upgraded sound system, heated and ventilated front seats, heated steering wheel. I mean, there's really not anything that this vehicle doesn't have besides a 360 degree view camera system. I mean, that's really the only thing that this, this thing's missing, you know? So I think this is a great value for the money. It's going to, it's basically the fully loaded CX-5 with the NA four cylinder. So the next trim level up, they're all turbos. So just, this is the fully loaded, naturally aspirated engine car. Uh, if you want a higher trim level, you wanna spend a little bit more money, the only other vehicles above this are the turbo models. So very, very nicely equipped, very nice vehicle, very nice looking, and it all comes in at a good value in my personal opinion. You can let me know your thoughts on the price in the comment section down below. But that's it for today's video. If you guys did enjoy the video, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button. As mentioned earlier, I'm on my journey to 100,000 subscribers and I cannot reach my goal without your support. So if you learned anything, if you enjoyed the video, please take a second to like, comment, and subscribe. Those things look very good for my channel in the YouTube algorithm and that is what helps me grow. Uh, also, thank you guys so much for 40,000 subscribers in the landscape of YouTube. It's really not all that much, but to me, it is huge, and I thank you so much for the continued support. But again, that is it for today's video. I will catch you all in the next one. Peace.